First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produce this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Hey, Haate, watch the East. This is Brother Fahim with an ill. Filling in for Dr. Aileen, ill bay. I'll be your host tonight, and our topic will be tonight uh, be about the Washita history of the of the, of the Moors here in North America and around the world. Let me read some of the the uh, literature that I got today. It says, according to We Are the Washita, the true story of the first inhabitants of American America African Moors, by Umar Ali Shabazz Bay states. The Washita and Tunica families carried the empirical bloodline. After the U.S. came into our land, these names were altered to Washington and Turner. Hmm. Also, we are the Aborigines, or as Lewis and Clark, during the Lewis and Clark expeditions, called us the black and brown, bushy-headed original inhabitants of North America. The Washita and Tunica families carry the imperial bloodline. All right. Here we have uh, the principles, questions, and answers for nationals. What wars were fought in the interest of the Washita? The so-called Barbary Tripolitan Wars, 1803 to 1815. The Napoleonic Caribbean Wars, 1804. Three, the War of 1812 against the British, 1812 to 1815. And four, the, the so-called Seminole War, 1817 to 1818. Name the several treaties that were enacted, but the most important for the Washita, the Transcontinental Treaty, otherwise known as the Adamus Onus Treaty of 1819, taking control from the Spanish de Bourbon. One, the Florida. Two, the whole of Louisiana. And three, the Pacific Northwest, later called Oregon country. 
Now, this is some of the earlier histories of the Washita, uh, how uh, the Europeans came to our land and stole and raped our land and our wealth from us. So I'm going to continue on. The so-called French and Indian War, 1754-1763, against the British marks a point in the history of the Empire Washita de Dudamandia, who was the imperial empress at the time, uh, yeah, Maria. How long did the emperor, 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 imperial empress reign? 41 years, the 1754 to 1795. One of her daughters, Royal Lyme, who was Anna Marie. Who was Anna Marie married to? Marquis de, Ma de Maison Rouge, Louis Francois Joseph de Bourbon. Prince, from this union came who? Henry Joseph Turner. Who was Henry Joseph Turner? Acknowledged by the U.S. Supreme Court and what? Heir to the Bourbon estate in June 19, 1848. What is the Bourbon estate? The Imperial International Estate of the Bourbon Habsburg Empire, which includes Western Europe, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Naples, Sardinia, Spain, and Portugal, as well as most of the North Amer America and Caribbean, in addition to Central and South America. And through this, Washita, wife, and a Marie, all of North America, West of the Imperial Demarcation Line, 1713, or British Royal Proclamation li Line, 1763. How did Henry Turner receive the international estate? By the way of Spanish land grant in accordance with the U.S. Supreme Court decision of June 19, 1848. Where did Henry Turner Sr. marry? Who did Henry Turner Sr. marry? Sarah. And out of the union came who? Henry Turner Jr., George W. Turner, and Eliza Turner. Eliza Turner was the, uh, the mother of who? Prophet Timothy Turner Drew Ali, the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America. The Imperial Ayi Marie Maria, second daughter, is Lulia. Who was Lulia's daughter? Mahalia. Who was Louis married to? The Marquis Louis Borgen Garrison. Well, okay. Did Mahila receive the Imperial Washita crown throne during the same time Henry Turner Jr. singing the, 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 the Baban Habsburg Imperial crown throne? Yes. Who was Empress of Verdiachi? Tiari Washita Washington Tunica Turner Augustin Ilbe. She is the Empress Highness of the Empire Washita. These are the Mandia Moorish Mound Builders. Who was the Empress of Verdiachi? Tiari Washita than Il Bay. Born. When was the Empress sorry. When was the Empress Vriachi Tiara Washita Tunica El Bay born? May fourth, nineteen twenty seven. Who crowned Empress Vriachi Tiara? Empress Del Delphia Kim's Badger. Who is the purpose of, what what was the purpose of the Washita Dita the Mandia Moorish Empire? Way out from the impression of the oppression of the United States meaning the United States Corporation. It can enable you to escape the corporate syndrome as well as the countless godless laws bound upon you through statutory contracts of adhesion. What is the purpose of the United Washington the Mandia Moorish Nation? To reanimate and to resurrect and the dry bones of the, in the valley, meaning the mentally dead, the deaf, dumb, and blind, giving them light, meaning knowledge of truth and even darkness, will be their treasures. Who are the Washita today? They are the indigenous people virtually all over the world who has come. Conclusion that being natural to this earth is far healthier than being corporate and contracted slaves. Ideally, they do not aspire to use trick words or force to get their way as led by the spirit of God will, of goodwill. They live to serve one another in that spirit. They live to be free of ignorance, fear, anger, greed, and lust, standards of modern life. They are learning to view the events of daily life as lessons, lessons about themselves, their thoughts, speech, actions, and worthy reactions. 
The Washington of today are progressive people actively learning about themselves and improving their character. <clears throat> what is the Washington today? The Washington of today Monday is an empire, a nation, a developing transaction government. The Washington of today Monday proper is the, the seat of the imperial government. The Washington of today Monday Moors are a nation of indigenous people. The Washington is the land of the ancient ones. The Washington Empire has a legacy of over 100,000 years of rulership by empresses. Her Majest Majesty Kindness, Radiachi Tiare Washington Turner, Tonica Gustin L. Bay is the reigning empress of the Washington Moor Nation. She's the legal heir to the Maison Rouge land grants that were skillfully willed to her great -grand grandfather, Henry Turner, son of the Marquis Maison Rouge. The Washington today is a place where indigenous people can come to be their best, a legacy of the original people and a land of opportunity for personal and spiritual growth. It is, uh, it is sad to say that our empress has passed into transition earlier this year. So, uh, but, but as we are right now, we're still looking for a uh, uh, heir to the, to the uh, matriarchal throne of the Washington, these are the more is empire. Where is the Watchtower today? The Watchtower of the Monday Empire is unbounded by the ancient ones. The mound builders lived all over, over the earth. The Watchtower of the Monday proper is the lower Mississippi Valley. Today, the Watchtower of the Monday proper, Watchtower indigenous people who have officially declared their nationality or having direct bloodline lineage could be anywhere on earth. When will the Watchtower be recognized? The Watchtower nation is recognized by the United Nations and given the Indigenous People Project number 215-93. The Empress of Washita, Washita the Mandia Empire, has been addressed and writing as the Empress of the Washita and the, and the Washita Nation, addressed and writing in the Washita Nation, each by the United Nations. The corporate United States of America and the corporate state of Louisiana, however, due to the magnitude of the changes which are bound to occur as a result of the Washington D. Monday Empire, the Washington Nation and the Empress of the Washington being recognized. No corporate entity has been eager to relinquish their control over the land, resources, and the people they are currently dominating. Why? Domination and concept of ownership comes from the idea of scarcity. The ancient ones believe everything came from, belongs to, and, and return to the Creator. No undivided dual being owns anything. They merely have the opportunity to give worldly things while the, they roam about in their flesh temples while evolving the, in spirit. Modern times have nearly eliminated the values, beliefs, and attitudes of the ancient ones. When the European colonizers traveled the globe preaching the word of salvation to indigenous people, they could not sleep without guns and fortification to protect them from nature and indigenous people. They took their fear and sense of scarcity with them everywhere they went. Fortunately, the Washington Empire has established the foundation where the idea of scarcity will be eliminated. No one needs fear. They will be without shelter, food, and unity of the community. Such freedom coincides with the natural laws of indigenous peoples. How is today? The Washington today is scuffling with the ignorance, fear, anger, greed, and lust of modern life, just as the, un the undivided duel must do to overcome centuries and lifetimes of confusion. Said authorities that ignore, deny, and violate the sovereign rights of the Washington people, nation, and empire are in the violation of international, national, and natural laws. The creator is just violations will be answered. Lessons learned and humility applauded. Who is Ben Bay Emmanuel Mu Ali? Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Franklin. Who is who is the African Lodge 459? Found Prince Hall, according to Clock of Destiny, Volume 2. Charles Bay states, Prince Hall is only a mystic name. So also King Solomon, Haimabir, Queen of Sheba, and David are only mystic names. Benjamin Banneker was a Moor. That designate the city of that designed the city for Washington D.C. and the city of Philadelphia, etc. Who has been York to Anna Marie, the former empress? 
Half Brother, G. Black Thunderbird, Eagle Dr. Reverend Malachi, Z. York, York Hill, is a direct descendant from the bloodline of Ben York. Thus, forever tying the Yamasi Moors, Yamasee Moors to the Washita Moors. Who was Tecumseh? He was Tecumseh Compton Bay, a Shawnee chief that cursed the presidency and he the last to hold the Moorish flag against the U.S. Who was the first actual president? John Henson, a Moor, who was the first president under the Articles of Confederation. Because you know we have four uh, constitutions, the Articles of Confederation, the Articles of Associations, and the Constitution of the United States of America, and the Bill of Rights. Uh, for those that didn't know, okay, Let's see, George Washington referred to the election of John Henson by stating, I congratulate your ex- Excellency on your appointment to fill the most important scent in the United States. John Henson served as president during what years? November 5th, 1781, November 4th, 1782, and the year of domination. Acronym for AD. And what year was the Declaration of Independence signed? July 4th, 1776 AD. Eight other Moorish presidents served between the years of 1783 and 1789 A.D. Who are they? Elias Benano, November 4, 1782 to 1783. Thomas Milton, November 3, 1783 to 1784. Richard Henry Lee, November 30, 1784 to 1785. John Hancock, November 23, 1785 to 1760 and 1786. He was also the first sign of the Declaration of Independence, Nathaniel Gorham, June 6, 1786, 1787. Arthur St. Clair, February 2, 1787 to 1788. Cyrus Griffin, January 22, 1788 to 1789. And what year did George Washington become president? 1789. Thus, George Washington was actually what president? The ninth president but the first president under the U.S. Constitution. Hmm. As a matter of fact, there were several presidents under the Continental Congress. Who were who were they? Peyton Randolph, September 5, 1774. Who was the grandfather of Paschal per Beverly Randolph, the former Supreme Grand Master of all the Rosicrucians in the world? Henry Middleton, October 22, 1774. Peyton Randolph, May 10, 1775. John Hancock, May 24, 1775. Henry Lawrence, November 1, 1777. John J. December 10, 1778. Samuel Huntington, September 28, 1779. And Thomas McKean, July 10, 1781. Did Abraham Lincoln, Emancipation Proclamation, free the POWs, prisoners of war, misnomer slaves, in 1863? No. Then what, what freed the POW's slaves? The 13th Amendment contained three empowering and liberation provisions of emancipating, 37, emancipating the 37th Congress, a revision of the military code forbidding soldiers to return slaves to slave owners. The Confiscation Act, which freed the slaves, about, allowed rebels, the jury, the juror, to free all slaves de facto who escaped or came into contact with the Union Army. And three, in an act of freed all slaves and their families who enlisted in the Union Army. May I say, I put this in here that uh, actually, uh, for you that didn't know, that Pre- uh, President Abraham Lincoln didn't really have the uh, right to free anyone because he really was the commander in chief. Uh, because uh, very few people know that civil, the Civil War was never really declared. If, if for you that didn't know that in there also okay um, the confiscation the confiscation act which freed the slaves to allow rebels I read that already did the US finish paying for the Louisiana purchase no did this mean that the land was supposed to go back into the bands to the hands of the Washita yes thus making the empress the, the heir to the 1795 Spanish land grant Maison Rouge the Louisiana prison consists of what states? 
Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, Utah, New Mexico, Florida, ETC, the Washita, Washita governing more than 3 million acres, the Empress Vidyachi Tierra Washita Tunica, Gustin L. Bay, and or the Washita hold the title to the area west of the Allegheny Appalachian Mountains. This land has never been a part of the United States of America. Is this the same land that Abraham Lincoln spoke of returning to the Moors after slavery? Slavery? Yes. He called the he called it the Egypt of the West and or the Central America, the land between the Rockies and the Al and the Al Al, Al-, 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 Al- Mountains, from the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada, and on both sides of the Mississippi. I, I, I guess that's where they got the forty acres of mule from, but no one ever got that. We all know that also. Is there any proof of this? Yes. In 1848, the Washington and Tunica nations took their land case before the U.S. Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Taney, who was Judge Who was Judge Taney? He was the name. He was the same judge who, in 1856, gave his opinion, which is not a legal decision in the Dred Scott case, which basically states there there is nothing a a Negro has that a white man is bound to respect. Who was Jamal Adin al Afghani? He was a master adept who visited the U.S. in the winter of 1882 to 1883. By the early 1880s, the Drew family is known to have settled in Newark, New Jersey. However, it is in the New York City that the Drew family is said to have been taught by the great Muslim master adept. The family has also been linked to the Moors Zionist Temple of Brooklyn, New York, Leon Richelieu. In, in 1964, was the founder of the first non Moorish Hebrew sect, which was established in 1899. What year was the prophet noble Timothy Turner Drew Ali born? 1886 to 1929. Who, was, who, who did prophet noble Timothy Drew Ali learn under during his early teenage years? Drew Ali arrived in Egypt, Kama'at, to study among Jamal ad-Din of Afghani and Muhammad Abdul. While studying at Al Hazar University, Drew, Drew Ali came out of the influence of Muhammad Rashid Vidi, 1865 to 1935 A.D., and Aziz Ali Al Masri Bey, 1878-1965 A.D., as well as the great Egypto Sudanese nationalist Dusi Muhammad Ali Effendi, 1886 to 1945 A.D who was also a teacher of the Honorable Marcus Mosea Garvey, founder of the United Negro Improvement Association. It is also said that the prophet noble Drew Ali Turner Drew Ali studied at the old Ethiopian College in Vatican City, Rome, Rome, Italy. And what did the Empress Vidyachi Tierra, Washington, Washington, Tunica, Gustin L. Bay, file to redeem land from the state of Louisiana? February 12, 1991. The state of Louisiana returned how many acres of land to the Empress Vriachi Tierra Washita in El Bay? 68,883. What date was the first what, what date was the land returned? August 1st, 1992. The Empress invoked a state of emergency proclamation signed by George Bush ordering all colorless people pale people to be airlifted from her land in what year? August 10, 1992. The Empress mailed a claim and demand to the said state of Louisiana for 380,000 billion USD and gold and silver to be paid to the Washington leaders of the Monday and Moore's Empire for use of Washington's property, land. Did the Empress receive it? No. Even though the said state of Louisiana did Respond by better, better by by letter. However, to this date, no payment has been paid at this at this time or yet. How much do the thirteen United States, the United States and the United States of America, hold the Washington or the dispossession 
of our people and the unauthorized occupation of our lands. Eighty quadrillion non counterfeit U.S. dollars of the Washington D.C. of the Monday Amur Empire was bestowed upon Ramesses Abu Abel, Abel Bey by His High, Highness the Empress Riyachi Tiara Washita Tunica Gustin Il Bey. Officially is what year? June 7, 1999. Prince Ramesses Abel Bey, Prince Hutton Tupac Bey, was the, the founder of the Washita D.C. of the Monday Moorish Nation. Do you know who was the Washita among builders? Or they are singled out by the United Nations in 1993 as the oldest indigenous nation. They are descendants of the Kamatu Egyptians who are the na who are the same as the Omex and Sumer Sumerians. General, they are the lineage of the of Israel, the oldest indigenous nation. There was an international trade network over the Atlantic. The Muslims, Moors of the Islamic Empire were the last empire that were we function under and mass. There are more pyramids in the Western Hemisphere than the East, and we are the direct descendants of these great architects. The truth about the Mound Builders is suppressed. Suppress. Why? Because they were an advanced civilization of dark-skinned people, hair blacks who were indigenous native to North America, akin to the Olmecs of South America. The so-called Black Mound Builders were the Washita Moors, Washita Moors, the original inhabitants of the North and South America. Many, really most blacks in North America are unknowing descendants of these mound builders, indigenous, indigenous remains of this and ancient, an ancient black civilization empire that stands as one of the best kept archaeological secrets in the country. And the, the truth, a lot of us are unaware that we are descendants of the Washita, these are the Monday Moors, since the Washington Empire is the oldest uh, and the oldest indigenous people in the world. So regardless of uh, what tribe or tribal nations, they are still Washita. Okay. The so-called black mound builders, really most blacks as the most are uh, in North America are knowingly descendants of these mound building indigenous re remains of this said ancient black civilization empire stand as one of the best kept archaeological secrets in America before long the arrival of Columbus is abundant from this distinctly Negroid features of colossal 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 characteristics to the bones of Negroid persons. Excavated from a two thousand year old mound in northern Wisconsin. A wealth of material exists to establish the certainty of non white, non Indian population living in pre Columbian America along with these other groups. Though so many mounds have been deliberately destroyed over 200,000 years, ancient pyramids and huge mounds of the earth in the shape of cones, animals, geometric designs can still be found from the southern coast of America to Canada. These structures were built by so-called obscure people, largely known as the mound builders. Let's see, section one. Okay. Section two. Here's history. History or history by pursuing the Circle Seven Holy Quran. No. The text is veiled in mythology and allegory. And this is also also for the Moors that are in these temples today across the country that are not aware of this. That are the, I'm talking to the Moors of, of these temples that have been compromised. It is a metaphorical book, does not to be taken literally, nor historically, for the lineage of the Moorish Empire. Note, there actually were and is a Moorish Empire, as the progeny of the Moabites, Moab, Tamari, and Ancomadian Egyptian words. Mo means water, and Ab means heart, which is reference to the heart chakra, the people of the deep feelings of the son of Lot. Lot in Hebrew means hidden. A reference to hidden feelings of the nephew of Chaldean, Abram, Abraham, Tamari. A Kamatian Egyptian word, Ab, means heart. Ra means sun rays. And Ham means black. Thus the heart of the black sun, which is a reference to the pineal gland and its excretion of the black substance called melanin, 
also Abraham, Abraham, Ab, Father, Ram, Haram, Brahma, Brahman, the Holy, the Holy Torah, El Adush Tanakh. You see, if, if uh, I may add that the Brahma is also uh, can be uh, turned around, and uh, you will find this Abraham or Abram. Later, 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 uh, late, late, later uh, name Abraham. Holy, holy is derived from the Greek word helios, meaning sun, and Bible is derived from the Greek word biblios, meaning pages or book. Hence, sun pages or sun book, derived from the ancient Tamare on Kamatian. Egyptian, Ra, Pepper Ra, Ra, Pipe, Papyrus, are also called Petrum Haru Sut, or coming forth by light and, and, by light and night shadow. And the Holy Quran is El Adush, Quran, the sun reflection or the sun recycle. By the Hebrew, by the Hebrew document from the Papal Library for the believing of the Candace Sheba, document actually refers to the hot, the the, the hot shep suit or upper Kamat Kamaat, which is Kush, Ethiopia, by the sailing on the Mediterranean Sea, meaning Middle Sea, into the Atlantic Ocean on the ninety. Five degrees toward west by the easy by the easy passage into the the Spanso North Amer- North American of the misnomer North America. <coughs> For the reference from the book by Maria L. M. Brosini, Brosini, the Secret Archives of the Vatican, on page 154, the meeting of the King Solomon note. Note saw from Latin means sun, om from the Vedic Sanskrit means God, and om from the Kama Aten Egyptian meaning sun. Uh, all, for those who don't know what actually Sanskrit means, it also means Sanskrit. Words are reference to the three phases of the sun morning, horizon, haru, or haru an noon, atan, adonale, andanias, master, and ever setting sun, atum set. Solomon of um, Amun, Amun Ray of Hidden God, the ram-headed nether god of the Thebes of the Israel, nation of the sun, moon, and star, and the Candace, Candace, Sheba, around the 960 before Common Era, for the rare reference by the Holy Quran and Holy Bible of the ruler over the Yemen, Arabia, and Cush, Abyssinia, by the Candace, Sheba, Empress, and Empress, Axum, a Mexican, during the first millennium by the before Common Era. <coughs> Excuse me. But the describing of the her- of daughters in the circle of 457, 450 before the common era of the Caucasians, Tamare, and, and this nomer, Egyptian, and the Kush Moor, misnomer, Ethiopian people with thick lips, broad nose, woolly hair, and burnt skin. For the referencing of the book 2, chapters 57 and 104, and the histories by Herodotus. Okay. Go to the uh, to the uh, uh, next page here. Uh, by pursuing a Bevan collection over 200 letters from the Continental Congress for the corresponding with the Bay of Morocco. This is during the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Moors and the Europeans. By signing the Moroccan Treaty of the Peace of the 1787 Common Era by John Adams, the Benjamin Franklin of the of the United States with the Tahir bin Albuquerque, Finnish and Imperial Majesty Emperor of the Morocco on the date 3-6-1789, Common Era for the knowing of the Massachusetts law for the binding of the Negro non-subject of the Emperor of the Morocco, of the Morocco citizen of the United States. So the tearing in the North Washita location of the misnomer. Massachusetts Commonwealth from the seventeen eighty nine Common Era, seventeen ninety Common Era for non trial under the Negro Act of the Sundry Free Moors by the petitioning of the House and the represent representatives of South Carolina. For the security mutual friendship between the free inhabitants 
Moors, Moors, and the State of the Articles of the Confederation, Article 4. By signing the Treaty of Tripoli of the 1805 Common Era by Colonel Tobias Lear as the Consul General of the United States of America, with the Regency Jess, Seven Kermitly, Bashaw, and Mohammed Karamanli Bay. All right. Here's a, a here's a script uh, page from the Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRisty. This is what he says about the Ancient and Modern Britons, known as the Moors. Volume one, page one seventy three. The fiercest division of these, and apparently the most recent in time, were the first of the Danes, or Cimbri, or Cimbri, remembered by the Christianized races, so-called white people of the Britain as the black heathen. But although such invaders as these be, be, may be claimed as in more respect to progenitors of the mingled people who are now called gypsies, yet like their con- continental so-called Europe, Europe Kendrick, the gypsies of Britain, so far earlier British ancestors that than these, Scotland was overran in one district by Moors of the 15th century, but five centuries earlier, the kings of Alban were Moors. But at any rate, the Moorish races were among the chief opponents of the Romans when they were marched through Britain 1,800 years ago, 242, and all the like Moors of the 12th century, Moray of this 19th century America. They were killed, transplanted, or placed upon the reservations to make room for people. But as the remains of the San Central stock and physique of the general population of Scotland, so we we find Kendrick evidence and the surnames common throughout the country of these. Many have already been given, such as Black, Brown, Dunn, Gray, Duff, or Dow, Dougal, Glass, Douglas, and other, Curry, Mary, Mac, McCollum, MacDonald, MacArthur, Clark, Winter, Gunn, Grain, Graham, Duncan, Ruthen, Ruben, Heron, Gordon, Horan, Gordon, Marshall, Kennedy, all indicated with swarthy ancestors, and their traditional descent from Scotia, the daughter of the pharaoh, may be the scholar worth, worth little, but their origin has been indicated in many ways as regards their complexion. We saw that they were slumped together with the Picts of Scotland, whom Claudia calls Nimble Black Moors, not wrongly named the Painted People, Wolf Stained Warriors. And these Picts and Scots were spoken of by a civilized South Britain as so many black herds. herds. The earliest British home of the Scots, Egyptians, were Ireland, and the conglomerate speech of that country is full of words and expressions that are parallel in ancient Egypt. While this, while this soil was yielded, was yielded by the emblems of Chaldean priests. Whether there is a connection between the Glyblock's hair of the wild or black Irishmen, those of the early Scots, if not identical with the hieroglyphics of the ancient Egyptians, were at least based upon the same principle. By reference to the Ivan Ben Sertima book, Ivan, the, the, uh, the African Presence in Early Asia, the Shang the Shang, who may be originally come from the West, were black. A present-day people known as the Naga, 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 Nasi. Naga means serpent. Serpent means to be wise. Serpent people consider themselves descendants of Shang. The name Naki was apparently given to the Shang by the Mosul people. These people correctly live in the Tibetan mountains. The Shang is recognized as putting China and knew on this history proper, acquainted with metalworking and bronze, the making of a form of uh, porcelain ware and silk weaving. The Shang people were credited with bringing together elements of China's earliest known civilization. And, and page 317, the meaningful indication of an African presence in ancient Japan, Nippon, have been unearthed from the most remote of ages of the Japanese past. To begin with, and as a significant example, a 5th February 1986 report carried by the Associated Press chronicle that the oldest Stone Age hut in Japan has been unearthed near Osaka. Archaeologists date the 
<clears throat> the hut to be about 22,000 years ago and said it resembles the dugouts of African Bushmen. According to Wazoo, Hirose of Osaka, the professional board of educational cultural division, other homes almost as old have been found before, but the discovery is significant became the shape of cleaner, better, preserved, and is similar to the African dugouts. By, six, by 600 years of the ruling of the Holy Roman Empire from the Habsburg from the 1282 Common Era, 1306 Common Era, by black nobility of the Habsburg. <clears throat> As those who do don't know that the black nobility is not just by coincidence, they were actually Moors, the Habsburg family, they are the Habsburg family. Those, those of you that have been studying things about certain conspiracies and things like that that have been going around the world for hundreds of years, but their ancestors go back to the Moors as well. Okay. Okay. By granting, oh no, by the assembling of the sustaining the independent sovereign nation for the knowing as the Watchtower leader of the Mandia Moorish nation and the holy and the unity Watchtower leader of the Mandia Moorish nation with the Watchtower leader of the Mandia Moorish empire and the unity of the Washington leader of the Mandia Moorish nation, governing body by the Washington leader of the Mandia Moorish empire and the United States and the United Washington leader of the Moorish nation, constitutional council of the chief with the bearing of the ultimate overall responsibility for the overall welfare and sanctity of the empire Washington leader of the Mandia Moors and the unity Washington leader of the Mandia Moor nation, national family by the empire Washington leader of the Mandia Moors and the unity of the Washington leader of the Mandia Moor nation, constitutional council of the chiefs, fiat justicia, concurrent on the power, the authority, and permission of the Most High and the blessings of four ancestors. Okay. By getting the reasonable and legal latitude for the leading of the Empire of the Washita Dida the Moors and the unity of the Washita Dida the uh, uh, Naga Moor Nation governing body, Emperor government by the Washita Dida the Moors and the unity of Washita Dida the Moor Naga Moor Nation Constitutional Council of Chiefs by the Empire by the Indian Party, Washington, the Moors. <clears throat> Chief for the, ver- for the virtues of the love, peace, freedom, truth, and justice for the ruling, and the more the justice, prudence, temperance, honor, and fortitude in the leading with the good judgment of the Empire, Washington, the Moor, Moor, and the Moors, and the unity of the Washington, the Moor, of Naga, Moor Nation. National family and the Empire, Washington, the Moor, Moor, Moors, and the United Washington, the Moor, Naga, Moor Nation. Imperial government representing them under the authority and directing of the grand architect of all things in creation, the Most High. Okay, let's skip some of these. No. <clears throat> okay. I'll speak on uh, 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 one section of this book. It's called The Human Rights. It says, Malcolm X speaks on civil rights versus human rights. El Haj Malik El Shabazz on Ormanwell, the son that has come home. Hmm. Human rights come from civil rights. You, you can never get civil rights until you have human rights. Human rights represent the right to be human. Beings, whenever you are respected and recognized as a human being, your civil rights are automatic. No, you have to get the recognition of human rights first. This is why people can c- come here from Africa, Asia, and immediately are able to benefit from what the Constitution stands for because they are recognized as a human being. When they, when they touch the shores of North America, but the b- black people in the country of all Human characteristics are, were destroyed by slavery. Our language were destroyed, our history were destroyed, and our culture was destroyed. And then the white man told us that we were savages in the jungle, living in subhuman level, 
any, any subhuman level, and for this reason, when they put the Constitution together, they classified our people as three-fifths of a man, which meant subhuman, not a complete human being, and once our human characteristics were completely destroyed, this gave them justification for treating us like we were animals. Then it also justified their selling us from plantation like if you were a, 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 a horse or a cow or a bag of wheat. Why? George Washington himself historically is one recorded having sold, having traded a black man for a keg of molasses, which shows you that he didn't regard that black man as a human being. If the black man, human rights, been respected, he never could have been a slave here in America. And if his human rights have been restored to the Emancipation Proclamation automatically, automatically we would have been citizens after the Civil War. So we must regard as we must be regarded as humans. Our human rights must be respected before we can ever be regarded as citizens of our civil rights. Be respected. Hmm. But the thing about this speech here, they still regard themselves as black people. Although black people, people are not black, nor crayons or Crayolas. Look, I asked one, uh, for instance, I asked one Asian woman, what does she classify herself as? One, filling out a document for a job or application for a job, whatever. Do she consider herself yellow? And she frowned. She said, no. You know, I said, why not? But she said, because people are not colors. This is just as an example what I am talking about. You know, they're not yellow. They're not yellow people. She said, we know uh, there are people in the West that cause of that, but that's not who we are. And same as goes for us as Moors. Moors means connected to the land. And that's what we should be calling ourselves. Uh, that's why today... Uh, even in the nation of Islam, they can't even uh, be recognized as a nation like the Washita, these are the Mundi Amur nation, because they call themselves black. And they're trying to still, still trying to convince people around the world that people are crayons. And they know that it is a, that it's a misnomer and that it's a legal fiction, not an identity of a people by definition. So let me go on, read on. You may wonder why all the atrocities that have been committed in Africa and in Hungary and in Asia and in Latin America are brought before the U.N. and the Negro problem is never brought before the U.N. This is part of the conspiracy. This old, tricky, blue-eyed liberal who is supposed to be your your and my friend, supposed to be in, in our corner, supposed to be subsidizing our struggle, and supposed to be acting as the, in the capacity of an Advisor never tells you anything about human rights. They keep you wrapped up in civil rights, and you spend so much time barking up the civil rights tree. You don't even know there's a human rights tree on the same floor. When you expand the civil rights struggle to the level of human rights, you can then take the case of the black man in this country before the nation and the, and the UN. You can take it before the General Assembly. You, you can take Uncle Sam before a world court. Only level you can do it is on the level of human rights. Civil rights keep your, you keep you under his, his restrictions under his jurisdiction. Civil rights keep you in his pocket. <coughs> Civil rights means you are asking Uncle Sam to treat, treat you right. Human rights are something you were born with. Human rights are your God-given rights. Human rights are the rights that are recognized by all nations of the earth, and any time any, anyone violates your human rights, you can take them in the world to the world court. Note, as of, as of September, uh, September 204, the United States is not a member of the world court. So, uh, uh, again, like I say uh, about the black thing, you know, uh, he's still... The reason why he could never get anything resolution, any pa- resolutions, any pass, uh, 
at that time because he still considered himself black and the nation of Islam as an actual nation, which uh, <clears throat> the cannot be considered an actual nation because there is no uh, nationality called Islam. Islam is a creed, a religious creed. Black or the black nation of Islam, well, there's no such thing as black people. A group of they, they do not exist. You know, they, they have no nationality or nationhood. So therefore, you are nationless people. So let me go on. <clears throat> Says here, Uncle Sam, hands are dripping with blood, dripping with blood of the black man in this country. His earth, number one, hypocr <clears throat> hypocrite. He has the audacity, yes, he has. Imagine him posing as the leader of the free world. The free world, and you are here singing, we shall overcome. Expand the civil rights struggle to the level of human rights. Take it in the United Nations where our African brothers can throw their weight on our side, where our, our Asian brothers can throw their weight on our side, where our Latin American brothers can throw their weight on our side, and where 800 million Chinamen are sitting there waiting to throw their weight on our side. Let the world know how bloody his hands are. Let the world know the hypocrisy that's practiced over here. At the end of that speech, okay. We go here, dealing with uh, government issues, dealing with commerce, and uh, social political issues. Okay. So here's the end, the, the end of time, the filling of the prophecies. Come all ye Asiatics, humans of Asia and the realm of the making of America, a Maroka, a Mexican, Al Morocco, and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights, because you are not Negroes, not by dictionary definition. Parentheses. Learn of your forefathers' ancient and divine creed that you may learn to love instead of hate. Come and link yourselves back with the families of nations. See, written by Nabi Sharif, Abdul Ali, Prophet, Abdul Ali, Ali, in 1910. How can we link ourselves back with the families of nations if we do not know the law of nations? Big question. The law of nations is the private international law between sovereign individuals, families, tribes, courts, grand juries, townships, counties, states, and nations. This has been all established under various international conventions for thousands of years. All the administrative rules and regulations, statutes, and the Uniform Commercial Code, known as the UCC acronym, and the Constitution of various countries are based ultimately ultimately on the organic law of nations. The law of nations is the law of, so of sovereigns, derived from the principles of natural law. It is from the law of nations the Constitution are created, and law for the jure government consummated, and any government that pretends power and wills authority without being answerable to the, the law are de facto unlawful governments ruling by occupation usurpation, and exploitation. De facto governments justify their existence by the rule of force and coercion instead of the rule of law. This is true. Legitimate lawful digital governments of the sovereign people by the sovereign people and for the sovereign people do exist by the rule of law. It is a universal rule of the law of nations that the that the created the government can never be greater than its creator, the sovereign. The federal United States government bases its entire existence upon the political will of the sovereign, paying no consent to supersede its authority. Such a government will self destruct, such as principle, such as principle has been universally accepted and followed. And it leads to following case steps of the date of the old Donahue case. April, May, 1933, Benner versus Porter. So uh, what he's saying is <clears throat> that 
by the will of the people. It is what because of the will of the people that can pass off of these laws are not actually laws. But they say this is the country, a country or a nation of laws. But I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, there's a this is a country or not, or not. I can say corporation, a corporation that is lawless. It has no laws. It's home of the brave, they call it. But but it's neither uh, brave. It's neither brave or or, or any none of, none of that, you know. So uh, this uh, the, uh, the the hypocrisy continues on. See, uh, the, the following definitions come from the Bouvier, the Bouvier Law Dictionary, 1856. The law of nations, the science which teaches the, the rights subsisting between nation, nations or states and the obligations correspond to those rights. Vital law of nations. Some complaints, perhaps not, unfounded have been made to the one of the excuses of the definition of this term. The phrase international law has been proposed in its stead beneath on morals and legislation 260 in case of some rules the deducible by natural reason from the immutable principle of natural justice and established by universal consent among the civilized inhabitants of the world. Hmm. I'm not going to go all the way into it because it's too long. So, <clears throat> here it is, law international. The law of nature applied to the affairs of nations, called the law of nations. It's also called by some, uh, some modern authors, international law. The law of nations, let's see, uh, what is meant by nation or state? Nation or states are bodies, politics, society of men united together for the purpose of promoting their mutual safety and advantage by the joint efforts of their combined strength. Definition of the Law of Nations. The Law of Nations is the science which teaches the rights subsisting between nations or states and has the obligation of corresponding responding to those rights. And what like nations or states are to be considered? Nations being composed of men naturally free and independent and who before the establishment of civil societies, live together in the state of nature. Nations or sovereign states ought to be considered as so many free persons living together in the state of nature. It is settled. It is a settled point with writers on the natural law that all men inherit from the nature of a perfect, perfect liberty and independence of which they cannot be deprived without their own consent. In a state, the individual citizens do not enjoy them fully and Absolutely, because they have made have made partial surrender of them to the sovereign, but the body of the nation state remains absolutely free and independent with respect to all other men and all other nations, so long as it has not been voluntarily talked about what I mean consent as actually we give consent for a lot a lot of things. That has been done to us. Really, this shouldn't be a part of our life experience as Moors and indigenous people, Aboriginal indigenous people of, of the planet. Um, uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of us are slaves by consent. If you go into a courtroom, uh, a, a judge may ask you, "Well, how do you plead?" Or you can reply to, I do not, uh, I state for the record and let the record show I do not plead. Or you can state, I state for the record and let the record show I do not consent. And I waive all the benefits. You can say the meaning, meaning consent, meaning you do not consent, meaning that you do not consent to his authority against you. You do not consent his jurisdiction over you or against you. And you do not consent of him having contract with you. Therefore, you do not admit their jurisdiction over you. All right. Let me see. Uh, okay, and what the law of nations originally consists. We must therefore apply to nations the rules of the law of nature in order to discover what their obligations are and what their rights, consequently, consequently 
The law of nations is originally no other than the law of nature applied to nations. But as the application of a rule cannot be just and reasonable unless it be made in a manner suitable to the subject, we are not we are not to imagine that the law of nations is precisely and in every case the same as the law of nature, with the indifference only the subjects to which it is applied. So, so uh, to, uh, to allow our substituting nations for individuals, a state of or civil society is a, is a subject very different from the individual of the human race, from which circumstance, person to the law of nature itself, there result in many ca- cases very different obligations and rights, since the same general rule applied to two subjects cannot produce exactly the same decisions. When the subject are different subjects when the subjects are different in a particular rule which is perfectly just with respect to one subject, it is not applicable to another subject of a quite different nature. There are many cases, therefore, in which the law of nature does not decide between state and state in the same manner. It is it it it, it as it would would, would, would between man and man, and man and man, we must therefore know how to accommodate the application in a diff, the application of it to different subjects, as it in, as it is in the art of applying it with a precision founded on right reason that renders the law of nations a, dis, a distinct science. Here we have uh, have. Uh, uh, Book One of Nations, considered in themselves, Chapter One of Nations or Sovereign States. Of the state and sovereignty, a nation or a state is, as has been said at the beginning of, of this work, a body of politics or society of men united together for the purpose of promoting their mutual safety and advantage by their combined strength from the very design that induces a number of men to form a society which has and common interest, and which is in fact in concert. It is necessary that there should be established a public authority to order and direct what is to be done by each in relations to the end of the association. The political authority is the sovereignty, and he or they who are invested with with it are the sovereign. Two, authority of the body politic over the members. It is evident that by the very act of the civil or political association, each citizen, sub, each citizen subject himself to the authority of the entire body and everything that relates to the common welfare. The authority of all, all over each member, therefore, essentially belongs to the body politic. The exercise of that authority may be placed in different hands, according as the society may have ordained. Three, of the several kinds of government. If the body of a nation keep its own hands, the empire or the right to command it is a popular government, a democracy. It is, if it is entrusted in a certain number of citizens into a state established an aristocratic republic, finally it can be, it, 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 if it confides the government to a single person, the state becomes a monarch. These three these three kinds of government may be variously combined and modified. That's true. That's true because when you say a when a republic versus a democracy, for instance, okay, a republic is actually ruled by law. Just laws are things of that order. Ruled by order. A democracy is not ruled by order. It's ruled by a mob rule. For instance, I could say, I say if I was a police officer, call what would we call policy holders or policy enforcers, because they're not actually police officers, but I'm going to use that term. Uh, maybe I just me another officer, and we're trying to protect the, protect this man from being hanged by this mob. But naturally, the mob will overcome us, and they will hang the man. But still, in whatever whatever what he done that the mob thinks he ought to be uh, punished or hanged for, 
But they overcame us, though. But, but you still have a democracy. You have a mob. You know, they hung the man, but they had the power to do it, not the right. That means that, uh, that, That's the difference between a democracy and a republic, form of government. Let me go on. Kinds of government may be variously combined and modified. We shall not here in, enter into particulars this subject. Belonging to the, the public universal law, one, for the object of the present work, it, it is sufficient to establish the general principles necessary for the decision of those disputes that may arise between nations. What are sovereign states? Every nation that governs itself under the what form soever, without dependence on any foreign power, is a sovereign state. Its rights are naturally the same as those of any other state. Such are the moral persons who live together in a natural society, subject to the law of nations. To give a nation a right to make a to make an immediate figure on this grand society, it is sufficient that it that it be really sovereign and independent. That that is that it governs itself by its own authority and laws. Now I'll go on to another subject in the book, the the Montauk of the Dead, on the Ali Shuffle. Let's see. Okay. At the current time, the door to Moore's mysteries is opening far and wide. The age of Pisces is at an end, and the Moors are coming to receive their inheritance. Drew Ali instigated this process when he returned to America and released a publication known as the Circle 7 Koran. While Drew Ali did not deliver, not de- did not, um, okay, did not deliver the concise formula as was clearly delineate, deline- delineated as synchron- synchronicity and the seventh seal. He represented the energy and was the energy of such. Drew Ali was very much a part of the mythos and and reality that, that enabled me to write this book. What Drew Ali wrote was geared to, toward the, a format that would be accepted by his people at the particular time. It apparently worked quite well. When the Moore Science reached its peak in 1929, it was on the heels of one of the greatest but most dangerous discoveries Drew Ali ever made. In 1928, Ali attended Pan African Pan African and Pan American Conference at Havana, Cuba, where he enjoyed broad recognition from a host of other countries. They were of course recognizing his sovereign status as a Moorish national, who was representing the ancient empire of a Mexican. Keep in mind that other countries had no reason to fear Drew Ali or what he represented. It was at this conference, however, that he received a document which was to change the face of Moorish science forever and would eventually lead to what is known as the Great Schism. What is the name of the Moorish community used to refer at this dispersal of Moorish science into different groups? The document the document Drew Ali received was a copy of a mandate whereby the Mexican Empire extended a land grant of the entire Western Hemisphere to certain Europeans. I have not yet seen the document, and its exact contents are highly mysterious, yet its ramifications literally turn the United States of America upside down. Essentially, it, le- it leads America to a certain party for a particular number of years, not unlike the way China leased Hong Kong to Britain. The leaf was up in 204. Says no here. The Lenape, ill, now be called the Nanakotes, Delaware Moors, Abenaki Moors, called the Pennsylvania Moors, Moors were the Washita Northeastern Tribal Branches, or Al Moroccan. The Al Maghrib prior here in the Americas and not the Kingdom of Morocco in Africa. They signed the lease 
Boris Landgrant with William Penn, which is Pennsylvania is named after. When the state of Pennsylvania is named after, hence the state of Pennsylvania housed the first capital in the city of Philadelphia. This was designed as designed by Big Ben Bay, Emmanuel Mu Ali of the Abenaki, father of the sky serpent, Abenaki. Benjamin Brenneker, Prince Hall, Prince Hall as as uh, as uh, as uh, the, uh, those of you brothers don't know of uh, the Prince Hall Masonic family, uh, Prince Hall actually was the cipher for Benjamin Banneker Bay, as what uh, Francis Bacon uh, was. Uh, uh, William Shakespeare was the cipher for Francis Bacon, and uh, those of you that study the mysteries, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, let me go further on. <clears throat> Uh, see. Benjamin Benneker, Prince Hall, the greatest operator and specul- speculative Freemason, Freemason, widow's son or son of a widow, the mother as in the black Madonna and child takes from the ancient image of a set. It is the uh, Moorish command word, uh, it's a set, the Greek word is Isis, the queen of heaven and, and Haru, which is the Moor uh, committed. Uh, term for Horu, for Horus, as the, as the Greek call it. The son, son, or S O N, or S U N, the son, Mary's son of Mary's, Ra, Aset, Isis, Horu, and later concept named Jesus Christ, the Messiah, derived from the ancient Tamarian, Kamatian, Egyptian word Horu, Eusa, Karas, Mes, meaning the ever coming sun, soul, or solar, sun god, higher self that embeds, anoints itself to reside in the mummified body of Asaru, called the pineal gland. Pineal gland is located at the, also called the third eye, at the middle of the forehead. If you if you can study it more, it's uh, it shaped like a pyramid or a triangle. That's what it represents. Let me go on. Uh, go where Okay. Okay. Uh, the physical body, um, cat, cat, nine lives, and reincarnation, various physical bodies. The same word as Asia, meaning body. Read ancient Egypt, read ancient Egypt, the light of the world, world, by Gerald Massey, volume one and two. It, it, it goes more into that. It is entirely reasonable to believe that such a document, if it still exists and and can be brought to light, is a mere relic of a long forgotten era that has no significant meaning in today's legal system. No, the document is in the book and in full detail the return of the ancient ones by high, by her highness, the Empress Viriati Tiara, Tunica Washita, Gustin L. Bay. This would be this would be fine this would be Fine, except for one very important point: if you if you have truly studied the detailed legal history of the United States of America, you will understand that there is more than a little truth to the, to the prospect of there being such a document. Why? The entire legal history of the U.S. of the United States is predict, predicated on such a proposition. What is known is that the Secretary of the State Hughes, from the U.S. government, intended that attended the Pan American Conference and was the, uh, was made privy to this mandate. So were several other heads of state. As a, as a result, a closed door conference between several nations was held in Geneva, Switzerland, and a library series of discussions and negotiations began. The Geneva Conference went on for some five years, but records are still still sealed to this very day. It is known that several international banks call in their loans as a result of this potential legal threat and the stock market crash in 1929. Hmm. Several countries, which include the United States, Portugal, France, and Spain, declare bank roughly in, uh, in order that the relevant powers could buffer themselves from any potential legal claims. In the case of the United States of America, 
It was recognized with a new corporate legal status. Franklin Roosevelt was part and parcel of the entire plan when he abolished the gold standard and created the New Deal. Federal Reserve notes were then issued in place of gold back currency. The great seal of the Boers was used on the back of the note. Those of you who do not know, that is our great seal. The Boers are a great seal. But the reason they tell you about they, they couldn't put it on a on a dollar bill or di- different documents or books, as uh, they tell you this uh, lame excuse or uh, gives the lame excuse that they don't have any room for it. But they don't want the people to know the truth. We know that, don't we? Now, okay, the great seal of the Moors were used. On the back of the notes, people behind the Geneva Conference were so concerned about any potential boomerangs from the Moorish issue that they began a full-barrel character assassination of Moorish heritage. The most flagrant example of this was when two master masons put together the infamous Amos and Andy show, and it became the first nationality nationally syndicated video show in history. It was deliberately designed the Moorish Science Temple by lampooning them as the mystic order of the Knights of the Sea. Those of you, those of you of, of, uh, remember Amos and Andy, I do. You know, I'm 61 years old, so I never did care for the program when it was on television. But uh, that's another story, so let me go on. From the perspective, this can be viewed as hysterically funny, especially Callously referred to, uh, when you consider, consider that the dignitaries have given titles such as swordfish, mackerel, and, and kingfish, and other. And on the other hand, it was a deliberate and malicious act of intent design to betray any more as the most laughable example of what could be termed the lowest common denominator. Not long after the Amos and Andy had its national debut. Drew Ali was arrested and mysteriously died. <coughs> Excuse me. This has been ignored by both history and conspiracy books. There's no conspiracy book that I know of, and I, that I've read plenty of them, that mention anything about the death of the noble Drew Ali, the prophet. None. I don't know of any. So I can go on. Okay. When you see how integrally connected the Moors are to the history of the world, let alone the United States, you see that they are at a guide guidepost to the true history of the planet. This is this is the lamp of the illumination, the Hermes lamp. Okay. Uh, those of you who don't know who the Hermes lamp is, it's from the tarot cards of deck, deck of cards, that the secret societies have been played tribute to and in their writings. By reason of our social conditioning, it seems utterly preposterous that the old Moorish Empire could have an actual court of law legal system, legal claim on this country. Conversely, it appears that world leaders have been deadly, deathly afraid of such and have even prepared themselves to legally avoid an interval. Once again, the Moors showed themselves to be hardwired into their infrastructure of our consciousness as well as the historical paper trail because the consciousness is back. They can be afraid of it, they want to, but it's like Dr. Deborah Blair said in one statement, uh, it's coming, you know, it's inedible because it's like a, an ant trying to stop an avalanche. So, we'll continue on. By reason of our social conditioning, things okay. I'm already, already, I, okay. Once again, the Moors showed themselves to be hardwired into the infrastructure of our consciousness as well as the historical paper trail. I was sent the following articles, and therefore I don't, I don't know who the author is. But obviously, the author is a member of the Clock of Destiny Moors, or the Great Seal National Association of Moors Affairs. In other words, a sincere national. I felt that it was necessary to list here for more clarity. Now we can go on to the U.S. bankruptcy and the Boers. 
the purveyors of so-called white supremacy were just walking around minding their own business, suppressing, destroying, and or misrepresenting the truth about history. Moore's history in particular went out of nowhere came the savior for the fallen people that they had extinguished the light and life within his appellation as Noble Drew Ali. Having traveled the world over, Noble Drew Ali obtained knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and overstanding into the many truths the oppressors were working so hard to hide. After detecting our true identity as Moors, Excuse me. Let's see, I saw. Uh, see, see. Okay, that was that. Let's see, as detecting our true entity as more and our true history, our possessors of the boldest artifacts and various sites, and what has been misnomer as the so-called Americas, as opposed to the lies, the so-called white supremacists who were spewing forth, all blacks were brought to the Americas by us to be our slaves. Noble Drew Ali implemented a series of actions to begin the process of resurrecting our people from the comatose and dead levels, though a lot of us are still comatose in the dead level state. So let me go on. These efforts culminated in the re-emergence of the Moors as a community in the sense of a body politic that was gestating, rebuilding into a nation once again. Okay. In nineteen twenty eight, the Common Era, the Pan African Conference was held in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State Hughes went down to represent the United States and Noble Drew Ali went down went down to represent the Boers. At that conference the mandate for the landmass of Greater Amexan, North Central and South Central Amexan, this number as North as North Central South Americas was returned to the Moors. Noble Drew Ali knew what this meant and what the ramification of this was and is. Noble took several stopgate measures. Drew Ali secured our cured the Moors' birthright inheritance and beneficiary interest as Moors to the land mass within the aforementioned land mandate. The actions of Noble Drew Ali were detected by the so-called white supremacists, and, their, and they immediately proceeded to act to do, to do all they could to impede his work and to take him out. Fortunately, natural law governs all events. Thus, by the time the oppressor made his move on Noble Drew Ali, Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali had already put things in motion. This scared the international bankers because land and labor is, is were all of our wealth comes from in the corner world and, and Noble Drew Ali had just yanked all the land from the so called Alaska to the so called Argentina out from under them. Even though we the Moors as a community were mentally comatose at the time. The international bankers recognized that the potential of our great inst- and return to our place of uh, prominence on the global scene existed. The the thus the international bankers Recall all of their loans in a panic, which in turn put a squeeze on their stock market, which caused this collapse months after the assassination of Noble Drew Ali. Yeah, see, the, when they done that, uh, there uh, were no ways they can pay us that money back in gold or silver. Not the, uh, no way they could do that. So they panicked, and that's the way they, reason why they panicked the way they did. They try to tell you uh, a lot of what had to do with because uh, after the uh, First World War, uh, a lot of the nations, Western nations, especially the United States, notwithstanding, uh, they went bankrupt, and it, uh, and they tried to get a loan from the international bankers, but the uh, international bankers told the United States Corporation, "You bankrupt," you know. Uh, do you have any 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 uh, collateral that we can use? Uh, yeah, you know. Well, we got the American people, you know. But the real reason was uh, uh, what this a uh, meeting in this conference, the Havana Cuban conference, conference, conference. The reason why 
the the depress the depression uh, uh, came about. That was the real reason why all that happened. So let me continue on. Uh, never let the so-called European on both sides of the Atlantic knew that their system was and is existing and functioning on borrowed time. They also realized that the length of that borrowed time is directly directly tied to the length of our, the Moors, ignorance and lack of knowledge of ourselves and our history, our culture, and what is rightly just the ours. The fact is what he compelled the so-called white supremacy to do all that is possible to keep the undeclared mentally comatose Moors from ever waking up and reclaiming all that rightly belongs to our people at the same time, keep the rank and file called Europeans from finding out what really uh, what, what is really going on. Because, as I say again, the re- reason why uh, they are in power because of our comatose, we are comatose, most of our people are comatose and mentally dead and spiritually dead, and this is why they are still in power. Uh, the same thing with the uh, the, the so-called currency uh, of this country or of this corporation, British-owned corporation, is because uh, the, the people believe in that it is real money that keep it standing, and there's our energy and our belief that keep it standing. Uh, the, that's why the uh, the dollar the dollar is still a, a temporary. Have, temporarily has buying power because I believe that it is real and, our energy, and the energy and labor that we put into it. But if we just stop putting our labor and energy into it, uh, this uh, this thing is over. It'll be, uh, it's over with. The game is over. Uh, 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 it'll be over before nightfall. Can you? Noble uh, Duvali works as a result of what Noble Duvali's works as a result of what happened at the Pan-American Conference, touched off a flurry of activity on both sides of the Atlantic, on both sides of the Atlantic, because the so-called European from both sides of the Atlantic knew what was coming as a result. The actions of Noble Dwight Lee called the so-called Europeans to assemble themselves to conspire and, and plot a way, a way to deal with what they thought would be a reemergence of the Moors to whom the respective countries are tributary to, as they all have been. If you, you want to more, know more about this also, so uh, parentheses of the U.S. and the barbary powers by David McRitchie, written in the 1800s, the Common Era, and documents this fact. If you can find it, uh, this book is hard to find. I try to find it myself, still, 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 still can't locate it. So... If you can find it, more power to you. All right, let me continue on. Noble Drew Ali knew that the same time of our the Moors resurrection had come, and and knew that his days were numbered. In fact, Noble Drew Ali stated, "It will take you Moors fifty years to figure out what I have done. <coughs> what I have done is not for you Moors, but for the three and four generations from now." There will be new moors that will come with their eyes open, seeing and knowing, and they will set you old moors in the back and carry out my law. The so-called European was horrified at the potential of our people rising 71 years ago. Yet, noble Duvali knew our minds were not ready then. Nevertheless, the so-called United States, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Convened in Geneva, Switzerland, for five continuous years, 1928 Common Era, common era to the 1932 Common Era, to set up, to set up what would be the policy of all the participating countries. These five years of meeting became known as the Geneva Convention. In 1930, in 1930 Common Era, the so-called United Nations, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain. Portugal of all declared bankruptcy. Any any attempt to obtain the minutes of the 1930s Common Era Geneva Convention are futile. 
because they published the volumes of minimum for every year of the Geneva Convention, including the 1930 Common Era, 1930 Common Era, but we refused to make the 1930 Common Era minutes available to the public, public because they contain the evidence of the bank bankruptcy. <clears throat> That's for today. Uh, even in court, uh, 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 when you take them to court for certain things like driver's license or any 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 kind of a uh, 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 or traffic violations. Uh, if you really know the law, really know the law, you can beat them at their own game. Because in order, them, order in order for them to really fight us on these issues, they have to uh, to admit the bankruptcy. And what they don't want is exposure. That's really what they don't want. So uh, especially when you take them to the Supreme Court. Because they know they will lose. So let me continue on. Uh, going to 1932 Common Era, the aforementioned states stopping meeting in Geneva. In 1932, Common Era Franklin Roosevelt became the U.S. president, and his job was to put into place and administer the bankruptcy that the United States had declared two years earlier and hide the bankruptcy from the unsuspecting public by establishing and reorganizing plan. I'm good. I'm not out of some may say again, the bank bus is actually was declared in nineteen thirty nineteen thirty, but it wasn't really announced in nineteen thirty three, the March eighth of nineteen thirty three. they announced the bankruptcy and it ceased as being a government or legitimate government, as you would say and declared national emergency, or what you call martial law. Well, because martial law has been in this in this country since 1933. Most people are not aware of that, but that's what's been going on. And the bankruptcy, also with the uh, the Social Security Act in 1935, with the, which is where did you get your Social Security from if the country is bankrupt. So all this thing about the national debt, the deficit, uh, all that really is a legal fiction. Is if we keep uh, the majority of the p- people working so so hard, and uh, the and the few didn't inherit uh, 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 the money, whatever, you know, or the wealth, and that's all it's about, you know. But there is really the, the national deficit really does not exist. So let me keep on. Let me go on. <clears throat> The, United, see, uh, the New Deal, administrative state of that functions under the color of the United States of America. The United States of America and the United States for America, along with the United States Constitution, became defunct from that moment on. And all that remained was the sovereign bankrupt for the profit corporation known as the United States. The United States codified, codified and documented, documented in Title 26 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 1911-2 and Merriam 36-505-141, New York 479, upheld by the the 16 Supreme Court, and so on and so on. Operating a, doc- a democratic military venue under martial law and the Uniform Commercial Code, Hebrew Commercial Code. So-called states are revamped in their, in their local constitution by 1938 Common Era to, to take into account their capitulation to the bank to the bankrupt mother corporations doing business as the United States, thus clearing the way for the Buck Act of 1940 allowing the corporate United States to extend its jurisdiction and by the default assert all sovereignty over the now defunct states republics. Getting back to Roosevelt, he was sworn into the United States presidency in January of 1933, the same year that Hitler, Adolf Hitler became chancellor of Germany in 1933. Okay. Common era wasted no time getting started with the, the bankruptcy. Roosevelt immediately shut the banks down, 
banking, holiday, and proceeded to all put all the gold out of circulation while replacing it with debt currency, tender, legal tender, with the Moors. C. The pyramid with the all seeing eye on the back of the U.S. dollar bill, Federal Reserve note. Federal Reserve note. note. Okay. Okay, let's get back to the clock of Destiny Book 2 by C.M. Bay. The amazing red skinned white Moors, Tawny Moors, bleached out Moors, progress was guided by the cycle of the planets, Jupiter and Mary, from the period of 140 years, Mars passes through the 12 signs of the zodiac 72 times, and Jupiter passed through the signs of the zodiac 12 signs. In 140 years, thus from the 1789 Common Era to 1933 Common Era, spelled the rise and fall of Rome on a universal scale. Take note of the fastest symbols on both sides of the speaker's podium in the U.S. Congress. Well, he's talking about the fastest symbol, uh, what they call the fast side. You can see it. You can see it. Uh, to see it on a dime of the, uh, the so-called uh, silver coins we have today, and you, they're called the fast side, represent fascism. Okay, let me continue on. Keep it in mind that the first eight presidents under the Articles of Confederation, they they were prior to. Uh, to them under Articles of Association were Moors, and they were in power from 1774 Common Era to 1789 Common Era, when the keys of power were transferred into the custodianship of the mystic Turks called Europeans Masons and Shriners that the Moors charged with the duty and responsibility of protecting our sacred shrine. New Jerusalem, Washington, D.C., and our and our sciences until we as a people arose from the state of spiritual, moral, and ethical decay and awakened from our slumber to reclaim all that rightfully belongs to us from their custodianship. The ninth U.S. President, George Washington, 16th Ashley, was a Grand Master Mason under the tutelage of Emmanuel Bu Ali bin Bey, Benjamin Baker, Benjamin Banneker, sorry, George Washington was the first and U.S. president and the Grand Master Mason Franklin Roosevelt was the uh, the last so-called European president to rule in the hundred in the 140 year cycle. Ain't that something? Roosevelt knew he Roosevelt knew he he was the last to rule in the in the 144 year progressive cycle of Roman universal influence. When he established a new order or new deal and broke the Roman order by, by ruling for 12 years, which is the measurement of man. When Roosevelt was given those famous fireside chats, he knew what was taking place, the beginning of the gradual return of the keys of power to the rightful owners, the Moors. Everything that was taken from us, us Moors, is quietly being prepared for it eventually to return to us, Moors. The gold, the U.S., tributary to the Moors, and they had to repay a $25 million in gold loan that were made to the U.S. government in 1861, common era, that the U.S. Congress is responsible to repay, to repay, which is why the seal of the Moors is on the back of the U.S. $1 currency, tender, and all the land was t- uh, taken and so-called whites were reduced from landowner status to mere land user status. The land they murdered my ancestors for and stole so that they could fraudulently provide their silent cohorts their people and their people with fraudulent land grants, land patents, loyal titles, and that those thieves and their descendants have, have no spiritual, moral, or ethical right to. The same applies in Kenya, Zimbabwe, so-called South Africa, Australia, ETC, yet they claim they are a great God-fearing nation. If this is so, doctrine of discovery from the Vatican, which is still in force, would cease to exist effectively immediately. If this is so, then the so-called whites will gladly return our lands, repay the loan we made to them, make recompense to us for the Tuskegee experiment. Emmett Till, 
Morris Bishop, the the Berlin Conference, and 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 way too much to list here. But don't worry, we will get, we will get to that 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 too, to be harm be in harmony with the soul, with the God, the so-called European clans to love and honor, respect and obey. The United States is bankrupt, and and its sovereignty gone. The U.S. and the state are not sovereign. Thus, the courts and the prosecutor can cannot have no bring a claim against anyone because, as a bankrupt entity, it has no authority to operate, and haven't since that time, since 1933. Therefore, the courts in the U.S. and the and the states cannot and will not. Resolve any issues. Technically, there are no more courts in the U.S. in the states. That's why you hear more of us when we give lectures. They call it mock courts. Are you supposed to have uh, 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 two courts, one criminal and one civil? But you have one called the traffic court, which there's no such court. So that's what it's called a mock court. So that's where they have no authority. The only authority they have is what the people give them. Uh, another thing here, uh, as a as a bankrupt and it, and 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 this corporate this country have no more sovereignty, uh, I can get back to the southern or the Confederate states, what what they call the Confederate states of America, when this uh, when Lee surrendered his forces to Grant in Appomattox, Virginia, in April ninth of eighteen sixty five, he surrendered their their sovereignty. But even most uh, Europe, Southern Europeans don't know, or uh, most Europeans period don't know. But when he surrendered their sovereignty to the North, uh, to uh, uh, General Ulysses S. Grant, they became a nationless, uh, a nationless, nationless, uh, didn't have a nationless people, didn't have no nationhood. So they, uh, they were uh, well, you might as well say they were worse than uh, the so-called black slaves. Although the black slaves was uh, uh, transferred uh, to one ownership to another, which is the U.S. government, but as far as the uh, so-called white Europeans, southern white Europeans of the South, they had no, they really they had no nation, they had no citizenship. Uh, all their sovereignty was gone; they were no longer sovereigns. But in in, uh, uh, in the 1930s, when Roosevelt came with the New Deal. Uh, only at that time, um, only ex uh, so called black slaves were supposed to have birth certificates. But then, when the New Deal came about, also the European uh, were required to have birth certificates as well, which made them black slaves. So, let me go on to the rest. Only have 15 minutes left here. Let me go on. Okay. Okay, uh, there are only private corporations doing business as, as quasi courts, with the magistrates and administrative judges. As an administrative judge is not, not the same as a judge. The U.S. bankruptcy is expressed by Franklin Roosevelt's Executive Order Number Six O Seven Three Six One 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 and Six Two Six Zero. U.S. Senate Report. 93-459 under the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917 codified as the United States Code titled 12 sections House and Joint Resolution 192 of June 5th of 1933 Common Era confirmed in Perry versus U.S. 1933 case site 294 U.S. 33381 and the United States States Code title 31 sections 5112 and 5119. The United States President William J. Clinton and his staff, as well as his successors and the U.S. Speaker J. Dennis Hastert, are, 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 are very well aware of this reemergence of the Moors or the, on the global scene in the form of the Mexican Moor Empire. All of the information parties know that, that the day they are their successors return the keys of power to the original and legitimate owner, the Moors are rapidly approaching. The Maximum Moor Empire, national, regional, and the local government is on the scene, fully operational, operational and ready to govern and be under the power authority 
and permission of the superb and supreme divine creator of all things. Yes, uh, as long as long we can come out of our comatose state and our dead state, once we come out of that, the game is over. I'm telling you uh, right now, boys. So, okay, let me go on. The U.S. Bank trustee, the U.S. Bank trustee, and the Moorish state. Okay, Article Four, Section Four, of the U.S. Constitution stated that the United States shall guarantee to every state and this union a republican, republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. Take note that a republic form of government, as I explained to you earlier, uh, a republican form of government uh, represents law. You know, a democratic form of gov- government represents mob rule, uh, uh, rule of the, uh, <clears throat> of the demon, or demon crazy. That's what it represents. Okay, the Pledge of Allegiance is the republic to which it stands is what is guaranteed, not a democracy. The Bill Clinton impeachment trial against Bill Clinton had nothing to do with Bill Clinton or the White House in turn. The Bill Clinton impeachment was a public debate about whether the U.S. citizens wanted to remain in artificial entities, corporations under the ownership, control, and jurisdiction of the bankrupt and sovereign U.S., thus continuing to exist as an economic slave to the public. Public as opposed to private. For the U.S. citizen would be to become U.S. citizens again, thus existing as a sovereign private citizen. Public rights only as opposed to private U.S. and state constitutional rights. As I, as I can tell you, when you go um, for you to, uh, that that um, apply for jobs or signing documents or filling out applications and stuff, when they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen, uh, most of you think that they are talking about, uh, are, uh, you, were you born here? Are you legally uh, 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 born here as a U.S. citizen? So, uh, as, a, as a U.S. citizen here in, so in the United States, but that's not what, actually what they're asking you. What they are asking you, are you an employee of the United States Corporation, which is a British-owned corporation under, uh, under the British Crown of England? Because the United States really, or the American, they really never really won its independence. Those who do not, do not know. Okay, let me continue on. Uh, uh, <clears throat> The Republican Party served as the council that was arguing for a republic law form, and they and I mean and the Democratic Party served as a council arguing the, the democracy law form before the U.S. citizen in an open debate. The question was: Do we try Clinton within the republic private form of government or under the rules within the, the democracy public form of government? To try Bill Clinton under the rules. Within the republic form of government, as the Republican Party had argued, would have required the U.S. Congress to address and settle the U.S. bankruptcy. No, they couldn't do that. See, so the Mexican Moor, the Mexican Moor Empire, as a creditor of the U.S., would love that to happen because the U.S. Congress would be forced to settle all claims against the U.S. because the U.S. government would have to be sovereign to be able to bring a claim against Bill Clinton or anyone else, for that matter, upon which relief can be granted. The Republican Party argued for the Republic form of government became a sovereign government, regained its sovereignty when it is no longer beholden to its leader, lender. The Democratic Party argued for and won the democracy form of government to be maintained that the U.S. remain bankrupt and insolvent. So is Great Britain, France, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Italy, Denmark, etc. Geneva Convention participants. The U.S. Congress was charged with the responsibility of managing the U.S. finance in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5 of the U.S. Constitution, and Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution states that the states may, may not coin their own money nor make anything 
but gold and silver coin, a tender in payment of debts. Congress is supposed to be responsible for the financial affairs of the U.S., not the private owned and operated Federal Reserve, which functions as a de facto constitutional central bank of the U.S., 52% owned by the Rothschild Bank of London, and Berlin, 8% owned by the, the Lassit Flash Bank of Paris, 8% owned by the Israeli Moses Sea Bank of Italy, 8% owned by Warburg Bank of Hamburg and Amsterdam, 6%, 6% owned by Lehman Brothers of New York, 6% owned by Cone Loeb of New York, 6% owned, 6% owned by the Chase Manhattan Rockefeller Bank of the New York, 6% owned by Goldman Sachs. Wow. That's some man. When the U.S. banks of bank roughly of 1930, Common Era was declared, in the U.S. Congress in 1933, Common Era, gold was taken out of circulation. And the unconstitutional, thus fraudulent, U.S. currency made its debut. All of the fraudulent U.S. currency in circulation was and is made at the average rate of two two cents per bill. That's about what they are worth. Regardless of denomination, the U.S. Treasury sells those bills to the Federal Reserve at a cost. Whatever the U.S. government needs a loan, the U.S. Treasury borrowed uh, those same bills from the Federal Reserve at face value plus interest and the suckers public U.S. citizens get a tax to pay the face value plus the interest on to the owners of the Federal Reserve by privately owned and operated collection agency, agency known as the International Racketeering Squad. Now, this thing about, uh, or going back to the thing about satisfying the debt, the, ne- the debt can never be paid, phony as it is, but it can still can never be paid. If you, if the, if, uh, the, the U.S. Treasury, uh, so-called U.S. Treasury Department borrows, uh, say, from the U.S. Federal, I mean, from the, not U.S., but from the Federal Reserve, uh, so so much money or millions or billions of dollars and with interest, if the interest is not recorded, what the, the U.S. Treasury borrowed from the Federal Reserve, how in the hell are they going to pay them back? They can't. Okay, let me go on. We only get it for almost about six minutes left. Any U.S. citizen that has, that has ever allegedly paid the IRS to look at who endorsed the check and use for payment. It was not the U.S. Treasury, so U.S. citizens can't forget about their taxes being used for running the country. You cannot pay debt with debt. You can only pay debt with substance. The fraudulent U.S. currency is a tender, a fancy way of saying it is an IOU that has no material value. Give me a pound. A pound of what? Give me a dollar. A dollar of what? On the back of the U.S. currency, one dollar bill denomination, you will find not one seal, but two. These two seals to pick two different governments, two different jurisdictions. Only you, uh, you, you were a Mason, and most, you, most U.S. citizens and U.S. citizens had never seen the great seal. Hold up. The great seal pyramid with all the seeing, with all seeing, with the all seeing eye prior to the late 1920s. Common era. What are the, what are they telling us, citizens? Well, are the U.S. citizens by having the seal of the Moors on the back of their medium exchange? What are they telling the declared Moors as well as the comatose undeclared Moors? They are telling the U.S. citizens that the U.S. is beholding to their lender, the Moors, owner of the Great Seal, due to the outstanding loan that has, that has to be repaid. They are telling the declared Moors that they recognize that the U.S. is obligated to repay the Moors what is owed $25 million in gold plus interest, penalties, and fines. However, they are withholding payment because the government of ours that they were, uh, were familiar with has collapsed, and they have worked hard to keep our people and their and theirs unaware of our inheritance. They claim that they don't know who to make the payment to. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, 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 Any time when a company or a corp- company or a corporation goes to bankruptcy or whatever, well, uh, they say they lost a lot, abundance of money. Well, lost the money to who? Somebody's got it. 
So, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to run out of time here. Uh, I hope I was uh, uh, did some good tonight, time being the host of the Blog Talk Show, of the, of the, of the First World Order. And I hope, uh, I guess you've noticed I got uh, kind of confusing some words here, but I'll get better as time goes on. Uh, I'm getting ready to sound off. And uh, I can't uh, really cue clue, uh, clue a lot of people in because I don't have a uh, keyboard with me. So, but next week, uh, Brother, Brother Arlene will be back. And I'll be his co host uh, again next week. And I hope, like again, I uh, hope that uh, I haven't, uh, 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 it's not my intent to uh, to insult anyone. I hope I've done a lot of good tonight. Uh, Peace and love to all the Moors and the human family all over the world. As I say to you, good night. Peace and love to all.